Greetings and praise day to you once again, people of God, as the Revelator once again. And I'm hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We are meeting in yet another exclusive presentation inside the Word of God. And welcome to the seventh segment, the segment before the final presentation, the segment as we rush to the conclusion but the seventh segment representing the resistance of God. Earlier on, a lot of characters that define the spiritual uh, characteristics of the leaders of the resistance has been explained in different segments, in different episodes. The likes of Samson, the likes of Gideon, the likes of Moses, all those prophets and judges, not only prophets and judges, but different men that were sent by God, some of them being army men, representing the resistance of God. And in the conference, that is representing the resistance of God, which is the vengeance of God, continues. Now, in today's seventh episode, without wasting much of your time, before I take you to the book of 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 1, Elijah has been taken by the Lord. But after Elijah has been taken by the Lord. He gives an assignment that remains with Elijah. We all know how Elijah resisted evil, resisted the systems of evil, resisted the government of Ab and Jezebel, resisted the false prophets, brought down fire from heaven, fought against the systems, we all know how Elijah was pursued by Jezebel. And as Elijah was being pursued by Jezebel, Elijah then releases his mantle to Elisha. And upon Elisha being handed over the mantle, the mantle of power, Elisha takes a mantle that was carrying the assignment that was supposed to be finished, not only by Elisha, but an assignment where Elisha was going to anoint a system of resistance, meaning that Elijah represented the resistance and he anointed a system of resistance which comprised of the prophetic office through Elisha, which comprised also of the political office under the military system, which was through Jehu. Therefore, Elisha is escorted by Elijah, as Elisha is following behind Elijah. And why Elisha is following Elijah is because Elijah has completed his assignment. And the assignment that has been com completed by Elijah is the assignment that was to dethrone the false prophets after he brought down the fire of God and it consumed the offering, consumed also the false prophets. Now, like I said, Elijah has been given the assignment. But as Elijah has been given the assignment, Elisha has been given the assignment that is hidden inside the jacket. It is hidden inside the mankle. Now I'm going to take you to 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 1. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Get up thy loins, take this box of oil in thine hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. Why? Because before Elijah left, Elijah had left an, an assignment inside the mankle that was recommending, that was instructing, that was endorsing, the anointing of jail jail what you're about to get anointed for is an assignment that is unusual 
Jehu, what you are about to get anointed for by Elisha, that has been anointed for the prophetic office, is an anointing not associated with the spiritual operations but it is the political office but this is not just a political office you are going to be anointed as a military man you are going to be anointed to rise against the system and the government of Ab and jezebel you have been anointed to resist the devil's resistance what jehu is about to get anointed for is rising up and fighting against these masters fighting against the autumn of jezebel fighting against the corruption of ab fighting and avenging the blood of naboth avenging not just only avenging but revenging the system that has displeased god and the Jehu, you are going to be the leader of the resistance. But before you become the leader of the resistance, you have to be anointed. There is no leadership in resistance before the anointing. They will kill you. You have to be anointed first to carry this man where you are going to rise and fight against your own former pay masters where you are going to resist the evil and the autumn of Jezebel and a young prophet is sent to Ramoth Gilead and he is instructed when you come up thither look out there and you shall find Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat the son of Nimshi and go in and go in and pour oil upon his head as soon as you come across Jehu, you shall not hesitate. As soon as you come across Jehu in the company of other military uh, commanders, go in, make him rise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, pour it on his head and say, that says the Lord, I've anointed you king over Israel, but the kingship of Jehu should not begin as kingship. What Jehu is being anointed for, before we talk about his kingship, is rising against Ab, rising against Jezebel, meaning that Jehu, you are going to start a movement. Jehu, you are going to represent a system. Jehu, you are going to represent the resistance. Then open the door and flee, and tell you not. And the young prophet went and anointed Jehu. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet went to Ramoth Gilead, and when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have an assignment, and he reigned, O oh, captain and Jehu, unto which all of us, and he said to you, captain, he arose and went into the house, and poiled and poured oil upon his head and said that said the lord god of israel i've anointed you to be king over the people of god i've anointed you to rule over israel and you shall smite the house of ab thy, thy master you shall revenge and avenge the blood of my servants the prophets and the blood of the servants of the lord at the end of jezebel you shall lead a resistance you shall represent and become the leader of the resistance that shall dethrone the government of ab the government of jezebel the autumn of jezebel for the whole house of ab shall perish by thy own end and i'll cut off from ab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in israel and i'll make the house of ab like the house of jeroboam the son of nippat and like the house of Baasha, the son of aija and the dogs shall eat jezebel in the portion of jezreel and there shall be none to bury and he opened the door and fled as soon as the young prophet fled and left the scene all the other militants that were around Jehu, they started celebrating, shouting, saying, Jehu is king. As soon as the anointing oil, as soon as the oil touched Jehu's head, 
there was a spirit that came upon Jehu. That spirit was so evident to the level that even the other militants that were around him, they started confirming that you are the king before he even became the king, before the coup. Jehu has not even yet led any mass resistance against the enemy. Jehu has not even started the movement. But the other militants understand that the Jehu that has been anointed is now empowered. And that was the military systems of yesterday. Just as was the former church. They believed and they understood and they knew the significance of being anointed and what it meant being anointed. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his Lord and, and said unto them, Is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow unto you? Why? Because the young prophet just entered the room, anointed him, and departed. He took the instruction as he was given by prophet Elisha. And he said unto them, you know the man in this communication. And they said, it is false, tell us. And he told them, as soon as he told them, they started shouting. They laid their garments down and put it under him on top of the stairs and blew trumpet said, Jehu is king. So Jehu, the son of Jeff, Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Immediately, Jehu, the leader of the resistance, gets down to serious business and begins by conspiring against Joram. Now Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead. Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel before Hazael, king of Syria. There was a joint partnership of kingships that was now corrupted by the autumn of Jezebel and the corruption of rulership that was now in the midst of the kings. But King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth nor escape out of the city to go and tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel. Now I need you to understand something. Before Elijah left, Elijah is representing the one that initiated this resistance by anointing Elisha, who was going to anoint Jehu through the young prophet. Now, everything that had been prophesied by Elijah was inside the mink. And part of that which had been prophesied by Elijah was that the dogs would leak the blood of Jezebel in Jezreel. Why? Because Jezebel had mapped at Naboth for his vineyard. And this mission was revenge. This mission was to avenge. This mission represented the vengeance of God. The vengeance of God was avenging the blood of Naboth. The vengeance of God was avenging the autumn that had been done in Israel, the vengeance of God represented the blood of the prophets that had been murdered by Jezebel. The blood of the prophet that had also been spilled by Jezebel. So Jehu wrote in a child and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there. And as yet the king of Judah was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman in every city by that time. There would be a watchman that would be watching, waiting to see if the enemy, if there was no enemy of this, an enemy that is coming. And this watchman stood on the tower in Jezreel and he spied in the company of Jehu as he came. And he said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a watchman and send to meet them. And said, Go and ask, Is it peace? So they went one spy on the horseback to meet him and said, the king has inquired, is it peace? And Jehu said, what do you know about peace? 
ten get thee behind me and the watchman told saying the messenger came to them but he cometh not again the moment that the messenger is not returning it means there is no negotiation there is a man that is leading a mass resistance there's a leader for resistance that is coming in full wrath. He's not coming for, to do any negotiations. He's coming to fight. Then he sent out the second spy on the horseback, which came to them and said, That says the king, are you coming in peace? And Jehovah answered and said, What do you know about peace? Turn the go behind me, and the watchman told, saying, He again did not return, and the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he driveth furiously. Child of God, a report reached unto the king that the driving of this fellow was like the driving of Jehu, meaning that even before Jehu was anointed, there is a way that Jehu drove the chariots there is a way that jehu was aggressive listen to me child of god when it comes to anointing the leader of the resistance when it comes to anointing the system of resistance when it comes to anointing the disciples of resistance we are not going to anoint any useless person we are obviously going to anoint those that are full of wrath we are going to anoint those that are radical we are not going to anoint those that have mercy we are going to anoint those that are merciless and the driving of jehu was furious and joram said make ready and his chariot was made ready as joram the king of israel and asia of judah went out each in his chariot and they went against jehu and to meet him hoping that they could reason with him in the portion of Naboth the Jezreelite. And it came to pass when Jeroham saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he said, What peace? What peace do you talk about? So long the autumns, so long the autumns of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. And Jeroham turned his hands and fled and said to us, Ahaziah, there is treachery, O Ahaziah. Watch out! And Jehu immediately drew a bow with his full strength and smote and struck Jeroham between his arms and the arrow went out at his heart. This is a man representing the resistance. He has not come to negotiate. Anything that is coming in front of Jehu is destroying anything that is coming on Jehu's way is terminating and after Jeroham between his arms was struck then sailed Jehu to Pitka his captain take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite for remember how that when I and uh, thou wrote together for after Ab his father the Lord said this burden upon him surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons says the Lord and I will requite thee in this plate said the Lord now Jehu went after the kings but when Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this he fled by the way of the garden house and Jehu followed after him and said smite him also in the chariot and they did so and going up now when jehu was come to jezreel when jehu arrived in jezreel at the palace where jezebel was jezebel heard of it and she painted her face tired her hair made up hair makeup did her eyelashes put on her lipsticks sat by the balcony let out her leg on the balcony and as she sat on the balcony she knew that Jehu was coming and Jehu entered the gate of the palace and Jezebel said it's Zimri peace who slew his master 
and he lifted up his face to the wind and said who is on my side and the reason why Jehu, the leader of the resistance is asking who is on my side is because there were three to two two to three eunuchs that were serving in the palace serving jezebel and he commanded them throw that witch down throw that wall down so they threw it down and some of her blood was sprinkled and it splattered on the wall and on the horses and it trod her underfoot the moment that jezebel falls down her blood is splattering and some of the blood is sprinkling all over it confirmed the prophecy that was given by Elijah of how Jezebel was going to die. And when Jehovah was coming, he did eat and drink and said, Go now and see this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And when they went to bury her, they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him and said, This is the word of the Lord which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall the dogs eat of the flesh of Jezebel. And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say that this is Jezebel. Child of God, I'm here once again to present the leader of the resistance between God and men. One that leads the resistance, anointed by God, to lead the military system to lead a war that rises against the enemy of God to lead a mass movement that weaponizes against the enemy to lead a movement that dethrones the enemy of God to lead a movement to lead a resistance that dethrones those that oppose God. And I, as the revelator, as a man of war, I represent the resistance of God in the name of Jesus.